week, we've got two potentially hellish house hunts on our hands. What's going on? She's in tears. Don't even ever want to go inside, to be honest. We have startling confessions. Speaking personally, I don't look so hot first thing in the morning. Shocking revelations. Both of these houses have just come on the market. This house is an absolute winner. It's like a little orphan house and it just needs someone to rescue it. And some divine interventions. I rescued your skinny ass from eternal damnation. But through it all, all we can do is pray for a miracle. If this comes off, it would have been one of the biggest turnarounds in the history of house hunting. This week, we're in the southeast on a search where size matters. I'm with a family whose house is bursting at the seams. And I'm with a young family who've given up their marital home to find their first family home. But bigger properties can sometimes mean bigger problems for us. Our southeast search is covering London, Kent, East Sussex, and Surrey. So we're going to be clocking up some miles and pounding the pavements in order to find the perfect home for our two families. Meet the Westcotts. Steph and Paul are proud parents to three boisterous boys. Games fanatics Jared and Roman and footy star of the future, two-year-old Brody. Paul runs three businesses from home. On my taxi van, hello. You don't need to be a maths genius to work out that three kids plus three businesses divided by one small house is a calculation that doesn't add up. It is quite chaotic here and I don't even realise how mad it is, but people just go, how can you live like that? With all the chaos, there's never a dull day at the office, especially when the junior apprentices drop in for an unscheduled meeting. Whoa. I have to have an office. It's crazy. I'm now running two businesses with a third starting up and I do everything from a, you know, a laptop and a mobile phone. It's madness. It's nothing short of madness. With so much going on around the house, Paul has had to resort to some desperate measures to stop those all-important business calls from going down the pan. Yeah, no, that's fine. Ironically, one of Steph and Paul's ventures is a removal company, but when it comes to moving themselves, they're struggling to get the show on the road. We've sold this house at least four or five times already, and each time it's fallen through is because we haven't found anywhere. It's time to call in the cavalry. We're desperate. We've got to move. Sounds like my cue to find out why a family who are desperate for space have failed to move beyond their front gate. So this has been home for seven years. Yeah. And I understand it's been on the market for most of that time. Yeah. <laughs> the day after I moved in, I decided I didn't like it, so I tried to It was the it. same but day? We did, we did phone the agent and they said, no, you can't sell it, you'll lose too much money, so we didn't. But, but you actually made that call to the yeah. agent to put the house back on the market. Steph, it yeah. wasn't even the next day, no, it, it was, was the same day. It was that evening. I had doubts before I moved in. The road was a little bit noisier than I thought, and we had, like, loads of cats at the time, and I was convinced that one of them was going to get run over. Are you going to be able to confront realities of the market? The problem with me is that it's not all about space. I tend to prefer the period features. I'm really fussy about windows and things like that. If I didn't have enough to worry about, <laughs> I'm fussy yeah, about I'm windows about and windows things and like that. Yeah, things like that. I like that. sort of features. What makes the ideal location? Paul has sort of been reluctant to move away from this area and I would like to move a bit further out. We viewed a few places mm. where you're down country lanes and I'm just thinking... If he sees sheep, he starts to hyperventilate in the car, so it's <laughs> not too well. You've obviously tried for a long time to find this new place and not had any success. Um, so we're really going to have to tackle it with an open mind. We're going to cover a lot of ground. Mm. This cannot remain your home, period we're going to be making decisions. Oh, so commanding, Phil. Paul and Steph have got a whopping £500,000 to spend, and for that they want a large family home with four bedrooms and space for an office. A large garden for the kids is a must, and it has to be situated near good schools. Phil's family aren't the only ones who've run out of space. Graphic designers George and Nonny have found things tricky in their one-bedroom flat since the arrival of little baby Anthony. Our one-bed flat in Crystal Palace was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was uh, but we had a little baby. Yeah, and we just ended up falling over his toys. There was no room for his cot. So their small but perfectly formed place had to go. 
And now it's sold, they've found themselves with less space than ever before, as their whole life is squeezed into one bedroom at Nonny's mum and dad's. Although it is good, we've got a babysitter on hand and food cooked, it does get a bit tiresome sometimes. I love spending time with my family, and so we don't want to go too far at all. For Nonny and George, location is everything. They've decided they don't just want to be near London or in a suburb of London, they want to be in Crystal Palace. And who can blame them? Crystal Palace is a vibrant area, offering a captivating cafe culture, fantastic bars and restaurants, and great shops to browse to your heart's content. The location is a big part of our search. If I didn't like the location, then it would have to be an amazing property to win me over. Nonny and George have spent six months desperately seeking a new home, but so far nothing has shone through and they're still trying to find that diamond in the rough. We're definitely looking for a hidden gem, aren't we? It's definitely out there, hopefully. Well, I'm a girl who likes her jewels. If there's a hidden gem out there, I'm going to discover it. You're in a good position to buy. Yes. Yes. You want something which should fit in Anthony and a another baby. Ideally, we want three bedrooms. That Ideally, way, surely, at least for if a... it was an amazing property, a two-bed property in Crystal Palace, then I would consider it. If you know you want more children and if you know you're going to run out of space, then there is an argument for saying, right, which is more important? Location, Crystal Palace, where you want to live, where you know it's hard to afford something with three bedrooms. Or are we going to say, right now, we're going to ditch the location in search of size in order not to have to move? If we found an amazing property that's not too much of a compromise, I think, on location, um, then, yeah, of course we'd look at it. Yeah. I believe you, Nonny. Thousands wouldn't. George and Nonny have got £350,000, and for that, they're determined to get a Crystal Palace postcode. They'd like a three-bedroomed family house or flat, and they want a private garden for Anthony to play in. So, I've got £500,000 to secure Stephen Paul a large family home in a search area that covers four counties and over 400 square miles. Well, I have a smaller budget of £350,000 and a search area which is less than 200 streets. It's my job to try and get Nonny and George to think beyond Crystal Palace. So I've got a nice young couple, new baby. They need to find a bigger house. They're currently living with her mum. Think you sort it? Yeah, I'm sure I'll sort it. I I'm worried for Steph and Paul. They are absolutely desperate. The house that they're in okay, yeah. doesn't work at all anymore. Yeah. They bought it, moved in, and she decided she didn't like it. And they've been practically trying to sell it ever since. Oh, dear. If I could swap, I would. If we hadn't already got going, I'd take it off your hands. I believe every word you say. No, no, honestly, Phil, I, I always oh, want no, to no. help you out in these situations. Steph and Paul are as different as chalk and cheese. Paul wants size in an urban landscape, while Steph wants space with a rural view. This first house definitely delivers on size, and as it's in Lee in Lewisham, its proximity to London should suit the urban fox in Paul. I'm going to be really upfront with you here because I've chosen this as a first house, as a pool house. There is absolutely tons of space here. Six bedrooms, gym, office, a couple of reception rooms, dining I'm room. Excited now. <laughs> <laughs> Paul might look like a kid in a sweet shop, but I think we might have to do more to convince staff. Well, this property is a real beauty. And with its four family-sized bedrooms and massive loft conversion, it's also quite the beast. Though the boys might want to get busy with a paintbrush. All that, and there's even an office for Paul, where he can continue to build his business empire uninterrupted. The house is nearly 23 grand over their half a million pound budget, but we think we could do some work on the price. That is, of course, if the house passes muster with self-confessed housing critic Steph. Shoot from the hip, go on. I don't like it, but I'm trying to be open-minded. Tell me what you don't like. It's got no character. It's dark. It's in Lucian. <laughs> what else do you want me to say? Has it any redeeming features? No, not yet. Paul? Uh, welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> this is our whole house at the moment, right here. You know, 
Paul can see where we're going with this house, but I think it might be Steph who's driving the search. No. For him, it's about space. So that for every ten houses we view, he'd probably buy five of them. Okay. Whereas I obviously am not like that. You know you can't remain no, in know. that frame of mind. I still have to have a nice vibe about a house. This lady is not for turning, even though the location is perfect for Paul. Uh, you know, it's a nice space, uh, it's big, it's... it's look, you, you've shown us what we asked for. OK, it's got the size, but it has got no features. Mm. And, to be honest, it doesn't feel that big. Well, this is definitely the wrong house, so we'll move. OK. Got a bit of driving to do. Oh, <laughs> a clue. <laughs> Little do they realise. After that viewing, Phil, I hope you realise you've got quite a battle on your hands. This week we're in the southeast with two families looking to put down some roots. I'm with a blossoming bunch who want to get out of the city and find space to grow into. And I'm with a young family in the urban jungle looking for that rarest of blooms, the perfect family home. I've got a massive search across four counties for Steph and Paul and their three energetic boys. Whilst I have a not-so-generous search area within London's Crystal Palace for new parents Nonny and George. They're desperate for a three-bed house with character, but despite a budget of 350000 it's going to be tricky. A typical Victorian house in Crystal Palace can sell for around 420000 but present me with a problem and I'll do my utmost to solve it. Just three miles down the road from Crystal Palace is the leafy suburb of Beckenham. With good transport links and a thriving high street, Beckenham could be the perfect solution for Nonny and George. And this is why this Victorian three-bed terraced house, a box ticker extraordinaire. With plenty of space for a growing family, it also has a large kitchen, off-road parking and a spacious garden for Anthony to play in. What's more, all of this is ten grand under their budget. I think we're on to a real winner. First impressions of the outside? It's an attractive-looking building. Yeah, not sold straight away. No, not in the location. Is it a palace inside? Uh, almost. <laughs> <laughs> Off to you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So, sitting room, diner. Yeah. Do you have that feeling, tell me truthfully, that you're just looking around the house to be polite because in your heart of hearts you couldn't live in this location? Um, slightly. If I came into the property and was like, wow, I'd buy it, then I would maybe not think about the location. It's not wowing, is it? It's, it's nice. It's, that's nice. the word. Yeah. Nice. Hmm, nice. The thanks but no thanks of property hunting. If you come down here, the sun is shining a little bit. The clouds are lifting. Is this a sign? The, the, the house itself, if it was in another location. If I had a pound. <laughs> George seemed to be a little more positive. But he's a man and, to be honest, when you're buying a family home, it's 90-10 in terms of the decision-making <laughs> power. Anyone who says different is talking rubbish. <laughs> well, in that case, I shan't say a word. Huh. It's ticking a lot of boxes, but there's just one main one that it's not ticking <laughs> at the moment. Listen, if anybody knows about having their cake and eating it, it's me. I'm a world expert. But in this case, I can't help Nonny, because if she's going to have the house which will allow her to have a second child and have space for them to grow in as a family, it is not going to be near Crystal Palace, at least as near as she wants it to be. Am I going to be able to persuade her of that? Well, maybe. Maybe not. Well, if anyone can, you can, dearest. So that's both our first properties knocked down and out for the count. The first house I showed Steph and Paul was big on space, but in the wrong location, as Steph is hankering for a more rural existence. So next up, I'm taking them further south to the small town of Crowborough in East Sussex. It could offer Steph the feeling of countryside she craves, 
and whilst it may be further out than Paul wants, it's an easy drive back into London. And to give this picky pair some choice, this viewing is a tale of two houses. Got an interesting scenario for you here, because both of these houses have just come on the market. Oh, okay. This is the unextended version, and that is extended. This is on at 450. Right. That's on at just under 500. Right, OK. Two houses. You've covered all your bases, Phil. Well, I'm feeling confident one of these should do the trick. The 1950s house boasts character and charm, but it's crying out for someone to drag it, kicking and screaming into the 21st century. With just three bedrooms and a living room, which would struggle to contain Steph and Paul's three boys, the house is a bit on the small side. But with such a huge garden at their disposal, Steph and Paul could extend the property to meet their needs. It's on the market of £450,000, which would leave them 50 grand to make any alterations. Right, well, first thing that strikes you in choosing this, you would commit to be extending it. Yeah. Initial reaction coming in here, Paul, and, and size of job. Yeah. It's a big job, isn't it? I know that you're more reluctant to do things like that, cos I've always said in the past, maybe look at three beds with putting another bedroom in, and you was always not really into that, was you? I'm a little bit like... The windows, there's some original, some not. <laughs> I keep like, trying to see which ones are what. But, no, so far, I've got a nice feeling. Uh, all I can say is you're, you, are, yeah. you, are, you told me you'd be fussy about windows, and you told me you needed an emotional reaction yeah. to houses, and, and you're sticking to it. Yeah. <laughs> I like people who do what they say they're going to do. Windows can be changed, Steph. It's the bigger picture you need to look at. What do you think about extending, though, seriously, if we're trying to live here? doesn't completely frighten me. That's because I suspect, as long as it is I suspect in... you don't really realise the implications. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but if I was adding value to the house and we could afford to do it, then, yeah, it wouldn't... But what I'm be... saying is you might have to go and rent somewhere else and live there, because... Yeah, but again, it all it's all down to money. Oh, dear. It wasn't part of the plan to drive a wedge between them. With three businesses and three kids, Paul clearly thinks they don't have the time for a massive project. For 50 grand more, the extended house next door would offer the convenience of just moving straight in and getting on with living. So this should suit time-starved Paul but it doesn't give Steph as many opportunities to really stamp her personality on the house. Which one do you prefer? Well, um, this one is yeah. the short answer, and it's so much mm. more easily livable. Think of, it's, a, it's effectively three think bed at the moment. I the other one. Really? Hmm. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because I like the fact that you can put your own stamp on it. Okay. Well, I wanted them to like a house, but I had hoped it would be the same house. And it's incredibly useful to be able to come in here yeah. and see. And see, yeah. Well, that's yeah. an example of what yeah. you could do. I, I think you could make something better than this yeah. over there, but it's yeah, time money and money. Yeah. Oh. I don't think Steph understands, at the risk of sounding patronising, and I'm sorry, but I don't think you grasp. I mean, you know, you're talking about concrete flying everywhere and dust mm. and... I mean, you've got three kids. Yeah, We're going to have children like... will be eating dirt. But yeah, none of them are, like, perfect as they are, are they? We're very unlikely to yeah. find a perfect no. house. You've tried hard yeah. enough. Mm. Someone's going to be making compromise somewhere. Yeah. I'm starting to realise Steph and Paul don't just disagree on where they want to live, but they also can't agree on the type of house they want to live in. Sounds like you're in a whole load of trouble, partner. It's day two, and we're still hard at work trying to find Nonny and George a home right in the thick of it in Crystal Palace. We think we found a great compromise. Just a ten-minute drive from the last property is this fantastic Victorian two-bedroom ground floor flat. How are we for location? Location's good. Well, if we've got the location right... The thing is, it's a really busy road. It is a really busy road, but I promise you... You are just... You're going to be eating your words. Okay. You're going to be <laughs> eating your words. Sounds like you've cooked up something special, Kirsty. Well, with its huge garden and original features galore, this property should give them food for thought. There's even a cellar, so the flat could be extended as the family grows. All 
all this and it's bang on their £350,000 budget. I've got very high hopes and expect to see some happy faces. So, wow, wow. Yeah. It's got so much square footage that when the time came that you needed the extra space, yeah. it would be really easy to alter the layout of this flat to give you a third bedroom. The outside, mm -hmm. inside, amazing. I Yay. love it. I do love it. I inside. agree. Yeah. Yeah. So far, perfect. Yeah. So far, so good. What's your feeling at the moment? You're beaming. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I love the flat. I do. It's and really nice. It's perfect. It's, a, it's the perfect flat. Do you have that feeling? I do. Yeah. Wow. But it's a road. I don't know. And I don't know either. They've asked to be in the thick of it, and now they're saying they're too much in the thick of it. Maybe what's hidden at the back of the flat might just change their mind. This is gorgeous. Oh, my. That's amazing. I mean, it, it has a lot going for it. It's been on three weeks. There are two offers came in yesterday, but neither of them are in a position to really move forward. I am really sorry about the busy road, but we are in, you know, the centre of South London. <laughs> Well, you can't have everything, and this is a cracking flat. So what do you think? I love it. I love the flat. But it's whether we can live with the road. It's I know lovely. we have... I know. I know we've got compromise somewhere, but I don't... This road is a big compromise. Baby. More for you. Lonnie and George really like this flat. How could you not? And they're going on about the road. Well, at least Nonny is. And this tiny bit of me is beginning to think she might be a little fussier than I initially realised. This week, we're on a search for space. We've got two families and two searches that have been struggling to get off the launch pad. But now that I'm... Sorry. Now that we're here... It's going to be blast off. I'll blast you off if you don't watch out. <laughs> Steph and Paul aren't giving us an easy ride. Two properties in, and we're still struggling to get into gear. Has it any redeeming features? No. Whilst new parents Nonny and George have stalled over postcodes and got into a bit of a jam over busy roads. Time for Kirsty and I to join forces in an attempt to drive Steph and Paul's search across the finish line. Now that we know the idea of a project whets Steph's appetite, we're serving up just that in an area which will really appeal to her tastes. We're in Tatsfield, a village on the North Downs in a small pocket of Surrey. This house might not be a looker now, but it's got enormous potential and would solve all their immediate housing problems. There are four good-sized bedrooms, including one with an ensuite, and a massive garden with great potential for Paul's office at the end of it. The house is £425,000, well under their 500 grand budget. This would allow them the money to do much of the work needed to make this house their home. Oh, yes, we have very high hopes indeed. Yeah. All right, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll come down. OK. What's going on? She's in tears. Oh. They drove past all the house. Bikes. I can't go. Phil, I've never met the poor woman. I can't just go blazing on down there saying, yes, you must look at this. I, you'll have to go and talk to her by yourself. Mm. Poor Phil. I just can't go off and see her. I've never met her. Okay. I know she wants original features and original windows and everything, but it's about the schools and the location and the potential. She's got to give it a chance. After only a glimpse of the house, Steph is wanting to throw in the towel. The main reason really is that because we've already seen the first house, which I didn't like, um, and I was just hoping that you would have found something. You've, you've looked for an awfully long time and 
we appreciate there's a lot of riding on. Mm. It's, it's, so important. Wrong, it? it's so important. And we've looked at so many places. It's not like we just come up to three houses and yeah, then burst me, into tears because it doesn't about... look like a, like a chocolate box painting. Yeah. You know, uh, It's not like that at all. We, no. we're, we're absolutely serious about this. I, mean, I realised that, which is what I've suspected all along, that I can't afford what I want. And so bit, but I was hoping that you would be able to find sort of um, stuff that no I can't find, find myself. Yeah. yeah. Um, but what we try and do is, is get is make you think and make you consider other things because what what you've been doing the two of you so far hasn't proved no, successful no. at all and something's got to change mm. whether it's your um brief mm. and what you want or whether it's the budget mm. whether it's the area something's no. got to give because no. it's not working no. I, I mean do you um you going to have a look at this? Yeah, no, we'll have a look at it. Okay. If you're up for it. Yeah. I don't want to make this any harder than it already is. <laughs> Phil Spencer brings another house hunter back from the edge. Morning. Hello. Hello. It's really nice to meet you, and I'm sorry it's That's on right. a difficult morning, but this house is an absolute winner. What you've got to do is you've got to stand here. Yeah. You've got to imagine that it's white, painted white, right. which is very easy to do these days, yep. with wooden frame casement windows. Right. It's like a little orphan house, and it just needs mm -hmm. someone to rescue it and say... You're good. You're it's a good sales pitch. Like you. You know, <laughs> I know, my mind's just turned me around. Well, it is. It's, it's an amazing house, cos it's got... It's like, look at it, look at it. I, I would mean, never have thought of um, that you, what you could do to make it better looking, but, yeah. Mm. It's great to see Steph smiling again, because the potential of this house should give her plenty to smile about. As well as improving the front, Steph and Paul could extend at the back, making a much larger family home for them all to enjoy. We've had one of the worst starts to a viewing ever. Getting them through the front door is an achievement. Now surely the only way is up. This morning, clearly you were despairing. Hmm. I kind of think I've known all along that I think what I'm looking for in my head is not on my budget. Yeah. And it's coming to terms with the fact that, OK, the next house I buy might not be the dream home, mm -hmm. but it's the next stage on. Mm -hmm. But having said that, I don't want to go through the stress of moving and the expense to a house that I'm not really in love with. I mean, I would say it's strong on location. Mm. It's super strong on garden. It's very strong on potential, ability to add value. The only thing it doesn't have is period features, mm. but it could have looks. It's, it seemed at times there's a bit of conflict between the two of you mm. and, as to who actually wants what and who's prepared to trade what. Mm. Is, is that fair? Yeah. We both really want the same thing, you know. The priorities are our children. Um, but there's practical matters. I've got to pay for it. I have yeah. to be able to work. I have to be able to run businesses. Mm. If you want X, Y, and Z features and properties, and you know, then who, someone's got to earn the money. It has mm. to be me. Mm. And it's not impossible. You know, there's, we, we we can do it. But this is not. Uh, this is a reasonable middle ground, right? Well, you haven't even looked inside yet. You Indeed. Better go and see see what she thinks. <laughs> If this comes off, it would have been one of the biggest turnarounds in the history of house hunting. We do occasionally know what we're doing. I wanted to thank you for your Jedi mind trick that you it's just pulled. It's not a Jedi mind trick. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> it's not a Jedi mind trick. This house is really strong, except it doesn't look it. It's, a, it's like someone, I mean, I don't know, speaking personally, I don't look so hot first thing in the morning. You know, makeup <laughs> oh free, my, hair unbrushed, and it's the same for this house. You know, someone needs to take it, paint mm. it, change the windows, yeah. open the house to its own garden. Mm. I think we're finally seeing Steph and Paul turn a corner. But you feel uh, all right? Seriously? Yeah, no, I do like it. But it's mainly that garden that I just love. But the area's good as well. Hmm. I mean, I'll be honest, it, it, work, it, it works for me. I'm waiting. You keep waiting as well. I'm waiting. You did Bobby, a good pitch. You, you did a good pitch. A good pitch. A good pitch. I rescued your skinny ass from eternal damnation. A good 
good pitch. It's a nice house. Oh, I'm actually quite hurt by the ingress. <laughs> kidding. I'm not going to bow at your feet. I know that's what you want. I don't want you to bow at my feet. I wouldn't say no to a new handbag. I like the fact that it's sort of under budget so you could add value to it and make it your own. I'm going to go back to Crystal Palace now. Um, if you could promise me not to cry on Phil again, I would really appreciate it. Because <laughs> I'm the one that has to deal with the repercussions, oh OK? Call me an optimist, but I'm taking some pictures of this house to send to a building beautician. With specialist help, we hope to get Stefan Paul to see how attractive this house could look. Over in Crystal Palace, Nonny and George have been impressed with the two-bed flat I've shown them, but they've had some reservations about the busy road. So I'm throwing something else into the mix. It's a mile from Crystal Palace in Upper Norwood. It's on a quieter road, and it's a house which is all about potential. This 1930s terrace might not have the wow factor of the Victorian flat, but it could be everything George and Nonny are looking for. It's got three bedrooms, a huge kitchen and a good-sized garden. It's comfortably within their 350 grand budget, and I think if Nonny and George can see past its tired exterior, it could be the house that finally gets them moving. This is a compromise house because um, it's close to your mum's, in the last house we were at. Yeah. We're staying within the Crystal Palace postcodes, but what's happened is we've lost the scale and the charm. It's a house. It's a, it's a really nice terrace house, a fixer-upper. Don't even ever want to go inside, to be honest. Oh, dear. That crystallises the dilemma. It's either further away for a better-looking road, a bigger house, which we saw first thing. It was within budget, but it was out of the area. This is not out of the area, but it's not half as nice a street. I can't believe these two won't even go inside, and with nothing else on the market for them to see, it's time to take stock. Where does that leave us? Where does that leave us? I think we need to sleep on the floor of the flat, because that was amazing, wasn't it? Definitely got the wow factor when we walked into the flat. OK. Nonny and George need to face up to the realities of the market and what their money can buy. Otherwise, they'll never be able to move forward. Nonny is a dreamer. She's dreamed a dream of the perfect family home for her and Anthony and George, and nothing I have been able to say or do has made her let go of that dream and face up to the realities of what's available. The flat is lovely and I hope she can compromise on the road. I think they'd be very happy there. Leave it with me, Kirsty. You know I like to seal the deal. But before I can sort Nonny and George out, I've got my own problems with Steph and Paul who are really keeping me on my toes. The house we showed them in Tatsfield offered plenty of space, but it needed a helping hand in the looks department. If we're to give Stefan Paul a home that delivers on size and looks, we're going to have to stretch a search area that already covers four counties. So we're taking them to the old market town of Heathfield in East Sussex. That's 40 miles away from where we started out in Paul's comfort zone of Bromley. We might be further afield, but we're rewarded with this beautiful Edwardian double-fronted property, which could be their forever home. The house has all its original features, which should certainly keep Steph happy. Upstairs, there are four double bedrooms, one of which Paul could commandeer as his new office. The house is 25 grand over budget at 525, but by taking Steph further afield, she has a fighting chance of getting the home we think she's been dreaming of. But will its location be too far for man about town, Paul? I, um, I have to confess, I'm a bit nervous. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Introducing you to houses. Not quite sure what kind of a reaction I'm going to get. Oh, this is beautiful. This is the sort of house that I love. <laughs> Wow, how about that? I've always wanted a double-fronted house with sash windows, so... 
There you go. So my, well, the only thing I'm nervous about is whether it's too far away. So it's a massive see. lifestyle change. Am I ready to give up my Monday night fight club, my Tuesday night poker club? You can still go poker. We better, we better have a look. <laughs> then we'll have the jury's out. OK. Righty-ho. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm a bit nervous. I've always dreamed of a house like this, and it's a bit scary because it's kind of not in Bromley and it's not, e mm. it's not safe, so... It, it's, it is out of your comfort zone yeah. of area, but, of course, that's, that's why... That's why we can afford it. Yeah. yeah. Phil's right. A property like this in Steph and Paul's stomping ground of Bromley would set them back at least £600,000. That's a hundred grand over their budget. Given that this is certainly the only genuinely period house that I've mm. been in with you, mm. is it how you hoped it would be? It is, but I have to keep reminding myself that because I love period homes, sometimes they're not necessarily the best family homes, so things like I have to keep saying, right, OK, where's the playroom going to be? Where's the other bathroom going to be? Yeah. So I have to rein myself in. Mm. But in um, regards to all the things that I love about houses, like double aspect windows mm. and fireplaces and that kind of thing, it's all here. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I'm, I'm different. I do tend to be a little less romantic about it. Creaky floors I am ambivalent about. <laughs> Sound yeah. great when you're wandering around during the day in the middle of the night, I, you know. I think this is lovely. Yeah. Where we've come from yeah. was where you wanted it to be. You guys, perhaps tonight, need to think, yeah. what's more important? Is it the house mm. or is it the location? Right. Steph and Paul have seen four properties, but they seem to be no clearer as to where they want to live. There's going to be a lot for them to talk about overnight. It's day three, and Paul and Steph have asked to meet with me to discuss the decision they've made. Property number four was obviously like my dream home, but I realised when I was in there that it would have been a decision more for me, the fact that I like period features. It didn't work as well as a family home as, say, for example, Tatsfield. For me, property three was the only one that was ever in contention. And last night, we were going back for a review. Then what happened? It was the road, because the front drive leads directly onto a road, and that alone pretty much had shut it down for me. Drives tend to lead onto roads. Good gates would solve that problem. And now we've got the plans back. There's no question of how special this house could be. Yesterday morning, if you'd driven past and seen that out of the window, mm. what would have been your reaction? Probably wouldn't have cried. You have now appreciated and accepted that what yeah, you want, we can't you can't afford where yeah, you want it. Problem. Mm. What are we going to do about it? I, I'll buy something mm. that I can afford that's a short-term fix, yeah. make some money on it, and then I'll be able to afford what I want where right. I want. So would your advice, knowing our situation, be to sort of buy that house make money on it? It, it would, actually, yes. Yeah. This is sound advice. They won't make a fast buck on the house, but if they keep it, live in it and enjoy it for a few years, it could prove to be the stepping stone to the house of their dreams. What, what do you want to do, then? Before, I was like, no, we're not buying anything, and now I think we should buy it and make money on it. You're, you're doing this crazy swing thing, you know? It's Steph, I'm absolutely on, on a, on a I, you know, it's not been shut down. If it is a sort of short-term financial gain that will get us the family home, then it's something that I would like to consider and go back and think about. OK. Wow. Are we still on course for one of the biggest turnarounds ever? Stranger things have happened. And over in Crystal Palace, Nonny and George are finally getting into the swing of things as well. Despite their reservations about the main road and the fact that the property has only two bedrooms instead of three, Nonny and George have asked to go back to the Victorian ground floor flat, currently on the market at 350,000, which is the very top end of their budget. We did want to see the flat again, because we loved it. Um, that road certainly hasn't changed. Everyone in this building, that building, that building has stood outside going, oh, it's on a busy road. Some people can handle it, some people can't. But everyone who chooses that is getting a better flat for less money. Yes. It's whether you can live with it or not. But 
Let's get inside. Okay. See what right. you think. And remember, there are two offers on the table already, so Nonny and George have to make a decision quickly. I was wowed yesterday. But today I'm just thinking of all the negatives before. And it has got so much going for it, this place. What too many compromises. Oh. When, when you say compromises, what do you mean compromises? It's, it's a not two a bedroom. compromise, it's a gorgeous flat. It's a gorgeous flat with two bedroom on a busy road. However, it's got an amazing garden. It's got the character that we like. Realising they can't have everything, George and Nonny must decide if they're willing to compromise or just walk away from the flat forever. I can't do anything about the road, but I have come up with a solution for their bedroom problem. Something that occurred to me, seeing how big the basement room is yeah. and, and coming out here and seeing where that grill is, Beneath yeah. the kitchen window, yeah. you can make that into a really big light well. Right. I'm talking dig it out six feet, All right. okay. and get a huge amount of light down into oh, that yeah. room. Right. That has the potential to be a really lovely third bedroom. I came out here and I went bing, <laughs> opportunity. That is not difficult to do. Just tell me where where, where are you at? I think we do need to still think about it, don't we? But that's definitely shone a light on today. It's, that's a positive from today. There's a bit of pressure to... I can see it building. Let's um, have a drink. <laughs> it <laughs> solves all house yeah, hunting problems. NB, not all Phil's advice is good. This week we've been on a search with some familiar old problems. We've had two sets of couples, both starved of space and hungry for bigger homes so their families can grow. Having appreciated that with a little TLC, the four-bed Tatsfield house could fulfil their family's needs whilst also making them a healthy profit in the future, Steph and Paul have decided to go back to take a second look. We've arranged for them to meet a builder and they're thinking big. So we're thinking maybe two storeys. Yeah. Full out. To where we are, I guess. Yeah. Probably looking at everything that you just said. Yeah. Between 60 70. Okay. That's for everything. Spending 70,000 to increase the living space and add another bedroom would provide this family everything they need and still bring the house in under their half million pound budget. If you're going to be extending and making it a five bed place, mm. it's a family home. Mm. I think we've decided it's crazy not to do something yeah. with this house. Yeah. <laughs> After four years, Steph and Paul are finally on the same page. This could be a great family home for them, as well as a great investment. Back in Crystal Palace, and we're not quite on the home straight. I'm still kind of not 100% decided. I actually love the flats. The roads is still that big issue. I, I think I should ring the agent and just explain that you're not 100% there yet. You don't want to make an offer until you are 100%. And as there's competition for the flat, it's really important they register their interest. Cheers. Bye. There are two offers on the table, but they are not proceedable. The moment they become proceedable... Yeah. ..it's gone. Yeah. Don't panic. If you change your mind tonight, at midnight, and you're freaking out <laughs> because you can't bear to risk it, then ring me and we'll deal with it. That may well just happen. <laughs> <laughs> I nearly changed my mind halfway through the conversation. Well, I hadn't had a mind to change. I could go straight for it. Well, say it, George. I've said it. You haven't actually said, I want that house, let's buy that flat. It's clear George and Nonny have got a lot to talk about. But good luck to them if they ring Phil at midnight. <laughs> There's no hanging about with Steph and Paul. In fact, it's the turnaround of the century. After bursting into tears at first sight of it, they've now asked me to put an offer in on the Tatsfield house. It's priced at 425,000, but as it's been on the market for 17 months, I start with a cheeky offer of 395. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers. This is refused. We push the offer to 400,000 
and then all we can do is wait. Finally, I get some news. And I bring glad tidings. Ah. 400,000 has been agreed. Um, house off the market. Congratulations. Wow. Thank you very much. Wow. Well, you better pass that news on to Steph. And hopefully we might get some tears of joy rather than <laughs> tears of upsetness. <laughs> we started with tears and ended with laughter. What an incredible journey. Two months later, no one's more shocked than Steph and Paul. Yeah, it was a massive mm. turnaround. It was mm. ridiculous. I was surprised that after having such a negative reaction to the house that I did get inspired to buy it. And once I had decided I did want it, I was actually quite eager to get it. And it's great to have people showing you things that mm. you would not have been able to conceive of yourself. So yeah, in that respect, it's been fantastic. They're now sitting tight and waiting for the vendors to find a place to move to. And with any luck, they'll soon be living in their new home. In Crystal Palace, the negotiations took a turn when the agent requested sealed bids for the flat. Nonny and George decided to put in an offer of £327,000. It was the lowest of three offers. But as they could proceed immediately, it was accepted. It was amazing. Yeah. It was... Great news. Overwhelmed and we just wanted to get stuck in straight away. They should have a new home within a matter of weeks. They're delighted, even though it's worlds away from their initial wish list. Kirsten and Phil opened our eyes to something we definitely wouldn't have looked at. I uh, think I was living in a bit of a dream land initially, because I wanted a house, and I think they made us realise that that is just not going to happen. And by compromising, they found their first family home. Once we've moved in, got settled, decorated. Um, we just want to enjoy being a family in our family home. You know, we need to start our own little family life. And in the end, that's what it was all about. Coming in. <laughs> <laughs>